Well, hello and welcome in again to the Worship Life Podcast with Mike Harland. I am your co-host, Brian Brown. It is a check local listings, a yes. beautiful sunny day Why are we not in at Nashville, the, we Tennessee. We ought to be at the beach today. Should be outside, but we're not. We're in the glorious B.B. You know McKinney studios. something I want to do? I've said this before Ninth on this floor. podcast. Yes. Yes. We need to find... Because we're we're six blocks from from our listeners first, know how close we are to the first baseball. Tennessee baseball right. stadium where the Nashville, Nashville Sounds, Sounds play, and occasionally they play that one o'clock businessman mm-hmm. special. They do. When are we going to do that? We need to have staff meeting. I mean, you're using businessman in the and, loosest possible terms. In the right field about burn way, yeah, area, we sure. could ten dollars a ticket. We could we could have our staff meeting out there, or mm-hmm. maybe choir practice. Uh, Probably. Not. <laughs> but anyway, but speaking of that. choir practice, we got a special guest today, Mike, and I know he's from your church, yes, right? Uh, Brentwood yes. Baptist Church. This in is Nashville. my worship pastor. So why don't you introduce him? my worship pastor? The first thing I want to do is tell you about Dan- Daniel Mars, who is the worship pastor at Brentwood Baptist Church main campus. Main campus. We have a multi-site model, so but he's he's on the mothership is what I like to call it. I don't think Mike Glenn, our pastor, likes to call it that, but I like to call it the mothership. Right. This is the captain of the worship ministry of the mothership Okay. of Brentwood Baptist Church, Mr. Daniel Morris. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's good to be here. Yeah, thanks. All right, so I sing in your choir. You do. You're was, faithful. Well, I want you to tell people just what kind of choir <laughs> member I am. Carlin is a faithful choir member. Yeah. yeah. I'm and in that tenor section. Just about every Sunday. I'm just you're about right up there, there every Sunday. Yeah. yeah. And love it. And Daniel, you're doing a fantastic job at our church. Thank I got to say much. that. And Appreciate that. and it could not be that easy to walk into Brentwood Baptist Church, you know, from outside the culture yeah. and be the guy at Brentwood Baptist Church, which is right outside Nash, Nash Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a few country music stars in the crowd there. A few. Uh, mm-hmm. Lee Greenwood was sitting out there last Sunday. <laughs> I, I went, oh, there's Lee. He didn't sing God Bless the USA, though. <laughs> he didn't. Occasionally, <laughs> I look up, and I see Larry Gatlin sitting over here with right. the, and a couple of his you brothers nearby. Yeah. And I've always thought, we should get them to do all the gold in California for an offertory. Don't you think? <laughs> well, I pray about that. And, you know, uh, Daniel... We had Dennis on our podcast, Dennis Worley, yeah. your predecessor, mm-hmm. um, a few weeks ago. And we talked to Dennis about transitions in ministry. And we were talking about his transition to, from the the primary worship leader of Brentwood mm-hmm. Baptist now to more of an administrative lead worship pastor for the campuses of Brentwood Baptist, eight in all, if you count the main campus as one of those. Right. So what I thought would be cool to talk to you about today is what it's like to be that guy that yeah. comes into a ministry. And Dennis is, hasn't even left. His office is down the hall from yours. That's right. Yeah. He was, he's been there 25 he's, years he's as your around. predecessor. Mm-hmm. And he's still there. And now you're the new guy. So, um, gosh, wh- how do we start a conversation about that? But what is it like to be the new guy, to come into an established ministry that's got a lot going on? And guys like me sitting up in the tenor section. Yeah, you know what? It's a crazy hairball. It's a crazy hairball <laughs> is what it is. And it, it's, it, you know, it's been a great experience. The Lord has just blessed our process at Brentwood. Hmm. And Dennis has been exceptional in his in the transition and has been a, an awesome resource for me, as he is for all of our worship leaders. And um, But he's been honoring to me. And coming in, and he's he just kind of he's he's back to, he's kind of stayed back, mm-hmm. um, which I appreciate. But then I mean I've got a trailblaze to his office that I I beat mm-hmm. down pretty often, and he's just a great resource to me. And so I'm so grateful. So I don't want to put you on the spot here. Yeah. This is not a time for you to. This is not a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what what are the things that look – you're coming up on two years in this yeah. role, which yeah. probably still feels like you're the new guy. I am. I mean, your pastor's yeah. – uh, Mike Glenn's been our pastor for 20 – how many? 30? Mm-hmm. Is he, is he mm-hmm. at 30? Not already? yet. Not quite, but, but he's on his way to 27, 30. 28 years, yeah. something like that. So he's still there. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of the other senior staff are people that have been there. Dennis has been there a while. Mike mm-hmm. Lawrence has been your instrumental director. Mm-hmm. for. He's been at Brentwood – 24 yeah 24 years I so think. yeah you're Long still time. the new guy I'm what are guy. some of the things you knew going into it that had proven out to be true well about how you've approached it i knew um i, I came from a smaller church 
and I was had been there for 11 years. Yep. So after being somewhere for 11 years, you just know everybody and everything yep. and all the happenings, and you've built uh, trust and reputation and those kinds of things. So you can be in somewhat of a legacy leadership position yep. there. Coming to Brentwood, I mean, immediately it was I, be, I was small fish, big pond, oh, immediately. Wow. And so all of the, I guess— the security, or now I'd say the false security of having that long tenure just goes away. Hmm. And you become the new person. And then following someone that's beloved and has served so well after 24 years, um, you know, you've heard the term the sacrificial lamb. Mm. You've heard that, right? <laughs> yeah. So I knew coming in that I was going to be up against that. Yeah. That yeah. My, and all the things that create that very scenario. Yeah. Um, and so and have just had to trust the Lord that he would, you know, that that would not be true. And I would say it doesn't have to be true. Yeah, it, it really doesn't. If you can let go of your ego and your yeah. pride and um, and just love and and learn. Yeah. Be in a learning. I guess I've mm-hmm. been more in a learning. Yeah. Kind of a letting go, soaking it in honoring Mm -hmm. and it's it that hasn't diminished me at all yeah in to to honor and to to just take time and appreciate what's there and um so that's yeah you know you wouldn't know this about my story but three times (laughs) i i and i matter of fact the third time i'm like lord and there's something i'm supposed to be learning here three times i followed guys Mm -hmm. that had 25 year plus tenures Two of those, they were still in the church. Mm -hmm. So I've done what you've done here at Brentwood Baptist, including the last church I served. Rip Cannon was the minister of music for 28 years and had moved to a senior adult pastoral role. And I came in and was his successor. And he's down the hall from me. Right. And uh, and but one time I followed a guy that had been there almost 30 years and he had moved away. He had resigned, had moved away, Mm -hmm. and was no longer there. And I came in and followed him. And I've told people this before. My lesson in that is I would much rather follow the legacy leader that is still there Mm. than the one that has moved away. Ah. And what I always tell people is the one that moved away, I was living with his memory. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is always idealized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the one that was still there when I went, I could build my own friendship with him. Right. I could honor him the way you have Dennis. I could, I could, I could, we could model something here relationally with him still there. And I've, I've told guys, I said, I would much rather follow a legacy leader that's still there than to follow the one that had moved away or the one that had died because the one that that had died was perfect (laughs) by the time I got there. Yeah. So, I mean, your comment, would you say the same thing? I would say the same exact thing and this is the first time i've ever been in this situation yeah where and where he's he's still there and it's been such a blessing and something that we can model to our people and the baton can be passed yeah and it's from one generation to the next and it can be a healthy and it, it's it, i think it's good for everybody yeah just to see that and be a part of it so what's it like to walk in and start building a relationship with a pastor who had had the same guy for 25 years, and now, and he's the same pastor, but now you're the worship leader. Talk yeah, about that journey a little bit. You know bit. what? I, and I just asked Mike, um, Mike, Mike Glenn, Glenn is yeah. our pastor, and I asked him when I came on, how is there going to be room around the table for me And a, after all, all these years? And, you know, he just reminded me, he said, Dennis was a wonderful part of our ministry, and is a wonderful part of our ministry, and we journeyed, and he fulfilled a mission and now it's my turn and it's our turn to walk into the future um, in the role that I'm in now with he and I together and I really appreciated that word from him that he saw our future with me mm-hmm. there and that was the the place that I had around the table the the richness of the past that Dennis is there and uh, the heritage and the wisdom that that is, and then the f- the future and the the um, different perspective that I can bring that God has for our future. So, uh, and that's really how it, it it is playing. That's how it's playing out. Yeah. And um, and I have to I've had to build that relationship with Mike from ground from the 
ground floor yeah. and just and, and those things that you would have to build with any pastor coming in i mean there has to be trust built and you do that by just staying steady and consistent and communicate yeah the communication and sometimes parts over communicate yeah. and ask and not assume all those things that come along with building a relationship with any pastor and um and and i just every meeting i get to um, meet with him every monday and I ask him, how can I serve you? What is there anything more that I can do for you? And just those small things have um, have begun to build that relationship that we walk in the future together. You know, it's interesting. I mean, and I'm I'm an observer to all this, Brian. I, yes. I've I've been like I said, I've had a seat in the tenor section, <laughs> and occasionally I'm on the platform. Dennis mm-hmm. uh, Dennis was really gracious to me to give me opportunities to lead. Daniel, you've continued that, and I'm very grateful for all of those moments where you say, "Hey, Mike, come lead this," and that's always real meaningful to me. And I appreciate that you've carried on something that Dennis was giving me opportunity to do. Uh, so, but I've watched you these two years move into a role that I knew I, I've done this enough myself to know all right this is not the easiest this is not for the faint of heart mm-hmm. to walk into a church that's going 180 miles an hour and and suddenly they oh and by the way you're driving it now and mm-hmm. it, it I mean that can be a little disconcerting I mean if you took me out here to the Nashville Speedway and put me in a car that I'd never driven before that could do things that no car I'd ever driven before could do right the first two or three laps around the track, you know, you're just hoping not to wreck this sucker, yeah. you know. So talk about some of the early lessons that you learned that could be helpful to that guy that's sitting there that's maybe starting a ministry that in some ways would be sort of like this, maybe an established pastor or following a legacy leader. Yeah. What are some of the things you learned early on and maybe even a mistake or two yeah. that could be helpful for somebody else? Well, I would, you know, I would say – um, one of the things that I had to learn to do, and you know, like I said, I was in uh, a leadership role for 11 years in Florida, and you know, at that after that time, I mean, you're, I was expected to speak into or have you know purview of most everything that was going on on a senior leadership level. Yeah. Coming here, um, I had to learn to just be. I didn't feel I didn't have to speak into everything. Yeah. I didn't have to have an answer for everything. I didn't have to know everything. Yeah. And I had to learn. And probably for That's the good. very first year that I was there in senior leadership team meetings, I just sat there. Yeah. And that was hard for me to yeah. do, uh, to just sit and listen. But I didn't need to. I, I just needed to soak it in. And so. Yeah. Um, That's a good word. And and that was tough to do. Yeah. Uh, but the Lord taught me a lot in that first year. And and then as I was trying to figure things out, of course, and that analogy is a great analogy on a speedway. Yeah. And you're in, in a car going 100 and whatever miles per hour. Uh, you know, every once in a while, you're going to you're going to maybe scuff the wall yeah, or hit right. the guardrail. Yeah. And that's what they're there for. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and I did. That's good. And, I, I, and I, good. I have done that. And it could be in just learning how to communicate with my pastor, learning to communicate with Dennis, learning to communicate with my leadership team, learning mm-hmm. all the things in the new environment. Uh, in a in a unique environment like Brentwood and Nashville is, um, and and learning how to manage your feelings and your emotions and your all of those things with your predecessor still there and down the hallway around the corner all of those things you just have that's a, that's a daily gut check yeah. you know and um, so yeah I mean. It, has it been? E- it has not been easy, yeah. but it's been wonderful. Yeah. Can I just say that? Sure. Yeah. That's very fair. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that's part of the that's the discipleship journey we're all on. Yeah. That it that when we're challenged in those moments, we've got to get outside everything that we've done before or comfortable with, and maybe even some of our personality quirks and things that that we've we fell back to that in a new environment in a new place. You had to sit in the corner a little bit in some of those for early meetings. Yeah. And you know what's so great about and I love history. So to learn the context and the history of where you are, I think is so important yeah, to, to, to 
for future. In order to know where you're going, yeah. you got to know where the people have been. Yeah, that's good. Uh, hey, on that note, let's take a quick break, and I want to come back. And, and Daniel, I want you to unpack that a little bit more, the importance of learning the history of what you're walking into and what that means in the ministry context. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back to talk a little bit more with Daniel Morris. Hey, this is Brian Brown, and I wanted to remind everyone out there that LifeWay is your one stop shop for all church supplies. Broadman Church Supplies. You can find them at lifeway.com or you can find them by calling us. Guys, this is everything from offering envelopes to different kind of bulletins that you might need for special seasons of the year. All of your communion resources, including the pre-filled cup that has the wafer in the cup in one unit, which is great for when you're doing your communion or Lord's Supper services off-site, or if you just have a large, large uh, congregation. It's just a great way to serve communion in a really effective way. If you haven't tried the pre-filled cups, I, I highly recommend that you check that out. We also have the silver and the gold and the platinum serving sets for those of you in the more formal kinds of a setting. You can just find every resource for church, your forms, your offering envelopes, everything that you need, usher badges, anything you can imagine. Broadman Supplies have it, and you can find it by going to lifeway.com and searching for Broadman Church Supplies. Thanks. All right, we're back, Mike, with uh, our special guest, Daniel Morris. We're talking about being the new guy and coming into an established congregation. Mike, you and I have been in, in situations we've talked about a lot on the podcast about uh, turnaround kind of situations, and it doesn't sound like that's what was happening at Bruma Baptist Church. He wasn't this, trying to resurrect no, no, no. something. This, this is something yeah. that's, that's going, and, and, and things are going well, and you're stepping into mm-hmm. that. We've been talking to you about that. You mentioned something just before we went to our break about uh, learning the history of, of an organization like Brentwood and how that helped. So, so tell us a little bit about about the process you went through where where instead of speaking into everything as you'd done in a ministry you were at 11 years you found yourself in a position of learning uh, again as the new guy and and just the process you went about uh, to learn about the history and what had gone on at Brentwood Baptist Church how you did that um well the um to to come in and understand i just started re i started reading i started meeting with people and asking questions do you tell tell me how how this was the cool thing about brentwood is nothing was really broke Mm -hmm. i mean it it was it was an established well equipped well functioning ministry and so i didn't feel like i had to come in and heal something i Mm. didn't feel like i had to come in and fix anything or put some things in place to course correct it wasn't anything like that so um and where I've had to do that before. So this was the really the first time where it was just kind of like a passing of the baton and then learning the context and understanding that. Well, you do that by listening to the people, I think, mm-hmm. and understanding understanding where the church has been and why things are the way they are. There's a reason. Sure. Uh, and Dennis loves the people enough and, and has been so wise that there was a, there's a reason why things are the way they are. And I didn't understand the the Nashville culture. I didn't understand the Brentwood culture. Mm-hmm. And it's really easy from the outside to look into and see. Oh, I could, I yeah, I think that Figure could that be done out. different. Yeah. I think you know, but you know, and 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 I would, if I were honest, looking in, from Florida, looking in, I would, I'd, there was, I was, I was like, oh, I, why I could, would they do that? Why would they yeah. do that? Yeah. Yeah. Or I could, but then when you get here, <laughs> and then you start to understand the context and the reason why. That changes, and I and in that first year of just listening and learning, a lot of my ideas and preconceived notions about what and why completely did a one eighty. Yeah, yeah. And and it's just listening, like just meeting with people like Mike Harlan and having coffee and breakfast with those, and getting some guys around me that love Brentwood and listening to Dennis and asking him questions. Why did you help me with this? What, you know, what is this? And, and so that was, that's been, you know, a lot of, a lot of the journey. I would be honest and say in these two years, I haven't, there's not really been a just significant monumental shift of change within the workings of our ministry. Sure. It's just me. I think one of my my biggest contributions has just been to learn people and love them and start to build relationships with yeah. them. Mm. I, I really I think I, I think agree. that and uh to continue that uh, legacy of love and equipping leaders, I value that so much and I'm so grateful that Dennis uh, had a legacy of doing that, yeah. and yeah. that might look different slightly, sure, uh, but it's the same 
the same principle and the same value in investing in the people around me. And one of the one of the things that I also learned, you know, and this is such a unique for this area is for the first time in my life, like I will, I have people on the platform that will always be a better musician mm. than me. Oh yeah. my gosh. I'm, I'm surrounded. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you turn around and, and Mike Carlin's in your choir, yeah. you've got David Hamilton at the piano. <laughs> you've got majority of the people are studio musicians. Yeah. I, you know, I remember my mom called and she said, or I was telling her who's always here. And she says, Daniel, you know, you're not there to teach him music, right? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, thanks, thanks, mom. Thanks, yeah, thanks, mom. Thank you very much. That's but, a good word. But yet, uh, it is. But yes. It is because in a lot That's of, in most of the context, you are the kind of lead musician of your congregation. In most contexts, yeah. In most contexts, it is your job. That's right. Uh, but to fa- fall into a context like that, that that's completely different. And to be humble enough. I remember reading an article years ago. Um, it's actually a biography. It wasn't an article, a biography of Henry Kissinger. And the, the biographer tells the story of where a reporter asked Henry Kissinger a question. And being that Henry is a professor at Harvard, the reporter <laughs> assumed that Henry would know the answer. Henry, being knowing that he was a professor at Harvard, assumed that he should know the answer too and answered. The only problem was he didn't know the answer <laughs> and, he, and he sounded foolish. Yeah. And so having the humility to, to defer when you are in the lead ministry musician right. role to someone who has greater talent than you, uh, it takes a lot of a lot of maturity. Well, I've got to say this, and I'm yeah. not trying to patronize Daniel, but Daniel doesn't need to back up from anybody yeah. in terms of your ability. I mean, you're you're quite excellent in front of a choir and and on a platform as a leader, spiritual leader, and and that's kind of the that. thing. You are. I mean, you really are. You. I saw that the first Wednesday night you stood in front of our choir and led us through something. I went, well, he's been around the block a few times you know? <laughs> uh, and God's gifted you and you've got a well, lot of you. leadership capabilities As a matter of fact you've written a lot about leadership principles and you've done a lot of coaching yourself even at a young age you you've become somebody that invests in others really really well which is why I think it's one of the reasons God brought you to our church but here's what I would say too though uh, is Brentwood Baptist didn't need Dennis Worley to be our worship pastor mm, anymore. Yeah. If 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 that was God's design, Dennis would have just kept going doing it. Mm. We needed what Daniel brings, and the the nuance of this conversation is where do you get to that point when you have had that year that that year of learning, listening, becoming informed more in perspective, and you start easing into your personality and the the changes that now you feel confident you can Mm -hmm. make. And I think that's what's been fun in the second year of watching you because more and more and more, I'm so proud of you because I'm seeing more and more and more of Daniel. Yeah. Where you're no longer trying to be what we've had going and what we've always done, but Daniel now begins to find your way. So, when, where where's that comfort zone? Where, where does that come from when you just start knowing? That's okay, great. now I'm beginning to feel and see and that's have more confidence well, to be me. That's a loaded question. Well, I know it is, but but <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you yeah. from the guy in the tenor section, I'm seeing it happen yeah. because yeah. there your, your leadership is really starting to find its place and its reason and i'm enjoying that that's fun to watch well it I, really is and you, you know i've kind of had a conversation about this I'm, I'm just gonna be real honest i'm gonna be pretty vulnerable go we can you know, and we can edit anything out you know what um to be honest when the lord puts you somewhere where everything that you have kind of built about yourself um you know the the confidence and leadership and the ability musically. And, and he, then he puts you somewhere where no longer that is, <laughs> that is not your identity anymore. Mm. And it kind of gets taken away. So for the first time in my life, I, I wasn't the, the best. Mm. I wasn't the smartest. Mm. I'm surrounded by such great people, but yet the Lord has put me here. And really I struggled that first year with mm. my identity mm. and um, because it had been, unfortunately, it had been in other, it had been, my identity was in how good I could be or how, how great of a ministry mm. or how polished I could be or, or all those things. And uh, the Lord just put me in a place where that wasn't enough. Mm. And so he had to, he had to just kind of strip me mm-hmm. of that. But until, and just allow me to be lost and be found and known by him or mm. where I, he became the center. And then when when that happened, 
then that that's when the the corner turned. You could start relaxing. I could start bit. relaxing. Yeah. The confidence came not in my own ability, but who Christ was in me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I could be confident in knowing that I'm not quite sure why he's put me here, but he has put me here. And so yes. here we go. Yes. And so I'm just going to maneuver in the power of the Holy Spirit and let him do that and not worry about being the best and not worrying about knowing more than David Hamilton or my yeah. Carlin knows, uh, but just being who God created me to be. That's right. wow. And I think when the Lord just put that clarity in me, and it was a defining moment for me. It really yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, and you p- could probably just tell yeah. when the Lord was doing that work in me and just kind of made, I did a kind of a right turn there. Yeah. And then it's been such great, sweet. Yeah. It was yeah. painful. Yeah. But now I'm in a, I feel like a really great, sweet, growing spot. So, yeah. yeah you know what I, I'm I mean, I did, I've watched it happen. Yeah. I mean, I'm just watching you. And, and here's the encouragement I'd give to our listeners out there is that this is part of the process that we part all go process. through. Right. Uh, Daniel, when you talk about your first year at, at Brentwood, we don't have time to talk about my first year at Lifeway. Uh, and, and no, Brian, we don't. Brian, and, and you, you were here. Yes. And yes, I don't I think it was just a year. I think it might have been my there first was... three years at Lifeway where I'm like, you know, there, uh, what, am, what the heck am I doing right. here? That's right. I've been there. And I know and it, you, you, it's a growing thing because God sends you. Yes. God sends us places for us to have impact on the places where he sends us. But Boy, we better all acknowledge real, real fast that God also sends us places for what He's doing in us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and yeah. it all He works in all of that at the same time, mm-hmm. and God's doing that work, and He's not done with any of us. He, mm-hmm. I'm still waking up some mornings going, "What the heck am I doing here?" Yeah, and, why, and, and yeah. I think, Mike, the moment we do get there, He's going to put us in a situation where we've got to grow again, right? Yeah. I mean, exactly. the moment we get to where we th- even think that we understand it and feel like we're striving, yeah. I think that's when God's going to say, mm-hmm. uh, "You're ready for the next test, and you're ready for the next trial, and you're ready for the next." Level well, of one of the cool things that I'm beginning to see, and I see this at Brentwood, and I see it in Daniel's ministry too, that is so counterintuitive to the way musicians are wired, uh, especially performers. They have this high performance value. We're, well, I mean, we we go to they call it voice juries, <laughs> you know. Yeah, in college. Yeah. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, we're going in front of a faculty, and they're they've got a piece of paper, and they're judging our diction mm-hmm. and our, you know, and the tone and all this stuff and what we've done. Uh, and we're we're graded on our performance. Right. Then we go into a church ministry, and and the the performance skills that we acquire and have been evaluated against are on display every Sunday. Mm. And and if we're not careful, we'll we will treat our ministry like we're going into the vocal jury, right? And we'll we'll bring some of the same attitudes and 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 that whole idea of being a diva mm. uh, gets comes mm-hmm. into play mm-hmm. here because mm-hmm. it's so performance oriented. It's time for another diva podcast, yeah, Mike. It is. We had one of the best <laughs> podcasts we ever did was you might you might be a diva, diva if yeah, yeah it's yeah, great. Yeah. You need to look that one up. And so growing through those seasons. And then getting to that center, you mentioned finding Christ as the center yeah. and the calling yeah. in the center. Yeah. And and then that relaxing into what he is doing, not what you're doing. All right. So here I'll give a little more of my story and let you bounce off of it. All right. I I went into a church one time thinking, man, wait, wait till you get a load of my bag of they, tricks. They were lucky to have you. They you? were. So, <laughs> I mean, let, let's Best just thing go ahead happen to them. declare. Well, Brian, you don't have to have that oh, much oh, sorry. fun with this. <laughs> declare a feast. He is here. It's almost yes. like he's here. He's here. He's come. Yeah. He is here. He's come to Kill save us. Yes. Calf. Yes. I've, I've, I walked into a church that way. And yeah. about 18 months later. Uh, I was ready to start selling insurance. Not that there's anything yeah. wrong about that, but <laughs> I, I was ready to do anything else because yeah. I got to the end of myself really fast. Yeah. And uh, I wish I could say that only happened to me one time. I, <laughs> think, I think we still, we could get right back there really quickly. Yeah. That's a little bit about what you've walked through yeah. here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's true. I, you know, and I, you come in with a, a little bit of confidence sure. and be like, okay, with the Lord, I can do this. Yes. Right. You know, you say that. We're spiritual. Sure. We're spiritual. spiritual. You were spirit. We're we spiritualize spirit. That's right. it. Yeah. We spirit. And, and you know, I, there was just this, I think, the deep recesses of, of self that the Lord just had to expose. Yeah. And he used that first year or so to just break me down and say, hey, I've got something I want you to do, but you're going to have to get yourself out of the way. Yeah. You're going to have to go away. It's good. 
and you're going to have to find your freedom in me. And really, I think that's what pe- yeah. that's what I that's what I know it to be, and that's what I think that you're saying that you have seen. And I, I just feel free to be yeah. who I am not and not anything. worry about. Yeah. And I and yeah, in the, that first year, of course, there's I think there's that sense that you do have to prove that you've you've earned the right to be here. Yeah. Whether you admit it or not, yeah, I think feel that. our humanness and and our culture really yeah. presses us to do that, yeah. and it and it, it's no different in church world, and and we we think in terms of we're climbing our career ladder, yeah, okay, sure. so and we think of all those things and putting ourselves in the in the it's self preservation, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Sure. Yeah. And so you you pick and and oh here's here's how I mean even in this, I, I pick songs. Mm-hmm. That we would do in choir, mm-hmm. that I I was familiar with, mm-hmm. we're in my wheelhouse that yeah. I felt comfortable mm-hmm. with, and I mm-hmm. knew I could we could swing for the fence yeah. and get good go. response. Yep. But it was all in. I know the Lord can use in spite of ourselves, right. and sure. I was, I know He does. But even in that, and I, I we can get in the trappings of of just yeah. doing that so that we self preserve. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we put ourselves in a position to look good. And the Lord just doesn't need us. He doesn't no. need that. You know what? You know what He's doing. He's meddling right now. Is yeah, what he's doing. a but little the, bit. But, but <laughs> it it really is. It's it's a a struggle that anybody that does what we do is going to encounter these realities. It's an insecurity, it. Mike. And yep. and you talk. You and I talk about all the time the insecurity of musicians. But if we could just find our identity in Christ and be yes. secure in that. But too often we're we're not, and we're trying to prove ourselves. When I heard you talking, I thought, yeah, you've got to prove yourself. You got to prove yourself. And immediately into my mind came the words of the hymn, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him. Or, <laughs> if yeah. you he yeah. he you don't have to prove mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. He called you that's there right. and he put you there because that's, right. that's where he wants you. Your level of yeah. giftedness is exactly what it needs to be today to do what God wants to do in that service. And do you need to work Amen. and do you need to grow? Amen. Brian's but preaching right now, now oh, you're where preaching. God wants you to be and you've got everything you need to do what he wants to do this yeah, Sunday morning. Awesome. So, you know, Preach. this is this is the trite little phrase that I've said for years. The way to know, foolproof way to know that you are where God wants you to be is that's where you are. Yeah. <laughs> he, can, he can move you. That's profound. He, he can yeah, move you awesome. anytime he wants to. That's right. He can pick you up by the nap of the neck. He yeah. asked Philip, the apostle, he God picked him up and put him next to a eunuch one day. I mean, yeah. God can do that. And so just here's here's the lessons from Daniel Morris. Just relax. Yeah. Just chill. Yeah. Find your center in him. Find yep. Trust him. Identity in Christ. In Christ there is freedom. Yeah, Amen. and freedom to to love your people that he's put in front of you, freedom to be who you are, mm. freedom to maximize the giftings that God has given you without worry yeah. of what may come. And I, I would say that would if I could any on my journey where I am right now, if I could in front of anybody, any worship pastor, I say, do not find your identity in what you do. Yeah. Amen. Find your identity yep. in the person of Christ and let him do the work through you. Yeah, that's Amen. great. Yeah, yeah that's what great. a great word. That's a good word. I'm glad Amen. we brought this guy in here. I am too. Hey, I'm coming. Hey, I'll be at choir coming. tonight. Good. Yeah, I'm coming. Good. Yeah, me and Teresa, we're going to be sitting up here good. holding hands. Right. Well, if, you, if you're listening right now, we know you probably have a choir practice coming up, too. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to email us, worship at lifeway.com. Tell us about what you and your church and your music ministry are preparing for. We get together as a team. We pray for music ministers and, and other people in, in ministry leadership. So let us know how we can do that specifically for you and your church in your context. Email us, worship at lifeway.com. You can also join us on social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or wherever you would like to interact. And then we always invite you to the blog as well. Well, worshiplife.com, and you can interact with us and with other ministers of music. So for Mike Harlan, this is Brian Brown saying thanks for joining us on the Worship Life podcast this week. We look forward to getting back together to talking about worship and music and ministry in churches very soon.